Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Ninja Sloths by Big Dog Games. This is a two to four player card game that takes roughly about 25 to 45 minutes to play and is for ages 10 and up. In the game Ninja Sloths, you are going to be acquiring a sloth uh, army or squad, I should say, and utilizing them and their weapons to go up against challenges or guards. Uh, you're going to be trying to complete a number of um, power on your mat here and utilize their power to defeat these guys to gain these gems here. The game will end when there are no more gems left based on the number of guards you have to fight, and you're going to be doing so by either fighting guards or stealing them from your opponents. Utilize the cards in your hand, whether they be weapons whether they be ninja sloths or action cards or in the expansion potions and attempt to complete your journey by having the most gems at the end of the game. We'll talk about how to set the game up, how to play the game, and of course, my review. Setting up the game Ninja Sloths is actually quite simple. First, determine the number of players you're playing within the game. And normally it's going to be two to four, but if you do have the expansion, you can play up to six players. Give each player a mat. Unfold the mat, place it in front of that player. Additionally, there are four basic ninjas in the main game. Each player will need one of these guys to start with, place it in one of the three column areas in the top row of their game board. Set aside the rest of the basic ninjas you're not going to be utilizing. Take the guard deck, shuffle it up, these cards are the horizontal cards, and deal out one face up. If you want, you can take the game box and put it underneath them, but for the purposes of this review, I'll just simply remove that box so it's easier to see. Also, gems. You're going to have a number of gems based on the number of players. The rulebook will tell you how many gems you get. In a five or more player, it'll explain how many gems you add. Four is 13, three is uh, 11, and then two is seven gems. One of those gems will go on the first guard. Then take the main ninja deck. The main ninja deck for the base game is going to come with weapons, action cards, and ninjas. Shuffle these cards up and then deal five cards to each player so that they have a hand of five random unique ninjas, weapons, and hopefully actions. Set them face down in front of the players and then after that you're basically ready to begin. If you're playing with the expansion, the sorcerer expansion, there is a few additional additional setup rules and rules to cover but I'll cover all that in my review. More, more, more so I'll just talk about the main game and explain that to you coming up, uh, but I will cover all the rest of the content as well. Well, let's get into the game. The game Ninja Sloths is played in turns. I'll take my turn, I'll pass to the player on my left, they will take their turn, and they will pass up until the end game condition has been met. The end game condition of the game is for all of these gems to have been placed on guard cards, removed and given to the players. And when there are no gems left in the pool, that will trigger the ending and whoever has the most gems is the winner. How you take your turn. The first thing you do is you start with your five cards and you'll draw a card from the ninja slash weapon slash action deck. From there, you're going to be able to take actions. Uh, the first thing you can do is take a ninja and place it in one of the three slots on the top row of your game board. Or instead of that, you can go ahead and place a weapon in one of the bottom three slots of the game board. When you place a ninja face up on the slot in your game board, that's just going to be an extra ninja. You can never have more than three and they cannot be on top of each other. And their total power will um, basically be what you need in order to defeat the guards. Weapons work similarly as well. They have a power in their top left hand corner, but you have to place a weapon underneath one of the ninjas that you have on your playing field. So if you have two ninjas, you're never ever going to have more than two weapons. You can't place a third weapon. No ninja can have more than one weapon. After you've played a card onto your squad, you can also play an action card. So you get to place one ninja or weapon, and then you can play an action card if you want. Like, uh, for instance, a hypnosis. You can stop an action from another player. Or there might be something that lets you steal a gem, or something that lets you draw cards, or discard cards and draw cards. Basically, any card that is white is an action card, and you can utilize one of these on your turn. Some action cards will actually let you use them out of turn. The cards say so, or you can check the rule book. The other option is if you do not want to play a card onto your squad, a weapon or a ninja, and an action card, instead you can just simply draw another card from the deck. This will just give you an extra card. So you can draw a card, draw a card, and then you will go to the last portion of your turn. The last portion is going to be allowing you to A, swap. You can swap a ninja for another ninja in your hand, a weapon for another weapon. You can't place any more additional out and you cannot remove them from ninjas, uh, weapons from ninjas or uh, ninjas from the board. You have to be able to swap. If I have one ninja on the field or let's say I have one weapon, I can switch out this shuriken for a bamboo staff. No big deal, no problem. You're also then going to have the opportunity to try and claim a gem. 
Gems are going to be guarded by guards. Guards have a number value in the top left hand corner. This is nine. And if you have the total value on your player board, you can claim the gem. Now, in this case, I have a four, a one, and a one. That's only six. If I added this additional shuriken on my next turn, that would give me seven, eight, and nine, thusly allowing me to take the guard here. If I don't have enough points, I cannot take the guard and I will simply pass. But if I do, I'll take this guard, I will discard the guard, and I will gain the gem. Whenever you gain a gem from a guard, you're going to lose all your ninjas and weapons to the discard pile. The only exception to this rule is if you have your basic ninja out on the field. Basic ninjas are never going to leave your field, but you can choose if, you're, if you want to to switch them out. But those ninjas will go away. So if you leave your basic ninja out, it's always going to count as a point. It's always a place where you can place a weapon underneath him. And you can kind of choose whether you want him on the field or not. But he's just never going to get discarded by guards. Guards typically discard everything on the field other than this guy here. Then after you've claimed or not claimed a guard, you will discard down to eight cards. If you have less than eight cards, you're good to go and your turn will pass. And if there is no guard guarding a gem at the end of your turn, you will reveal a new guard and you will take a new gem from the pile, it doesn't matter what color, and place it on that guard so that the next player will have an opportunity for them to get a gem. However, that guard might have a different power level than the one you previously defeated. And that's basically how you play the game. The next player will go ahead and take their turn. They'll draw a ninja card. They'll go ahead and either place a weapon underneath a ninja or they will place a ninja. Then they're going to play a card if they want, like steal an opponent's gem. Steal somebody's gem here. Uh, and then they're going to go ahead and do the end phase. Check to see if their power level meets the guard's level. Check to see if they can steal that or if they want to or not. And then discard down to eight cards if necessary. And play will pass. Up until all of the guards have been defeated equal to the number of gems. And then these gems are in players' possessions. Whoever has the most gems at the end of the game is going to be the winner. And if there's a tie, both players win. Ninja Sloths is a take that tableau management card game. What you're going to be doing in the game is simple, utilizing your ninjas slash sloths and also weapons to attempt to have a high enough power level to defeat the guard that is in the middle of the table. If you can do that, you will gain the gem. Additionally, you want to hoard and secure action cards to utilize them at the best possible moments to make sure that you can either A, steal cards or steal specific gems or so that you can protect yourself from being stolen from. There's going to be a lot of ways in which the different gems are going to be given out to other players or stolen from other players. And so to be kind of on guard, drawing cards is never a bad idea in the game, especially to secure your hand size to that coveted eight, because then you can utilize those cards when necessary to either bolster your ranks or be able to protect yourself from being stolen from or steal from other players, of course. There is additional content in the expansion. There's a Sorcerer expansion, it's called Ninja Sloth's Sorcerers, and it's an expansion pack that can be played alone or you can add it to the main game. And there are a few changes to this game. The first thing that gets added is potions. Potions are basically like weapon cards, but you do not attach them to sloths. Instead, you're going to be needing these to defeat certain guards. Uh, in the new expansion, guards are still going to have their power level in the top left hand corner, but in the bottom right hand side, there's going to be requirements to defeat the guards. The first one is you're going to have to have a certain ninja of a certain value. In this case, it says a ninja worth five. Then it's a weapon of a certain value. It says a weapon of two. And then finally, a number of potions that you will need to have. If the card says zero, you don't even need to have that specific type of thing on the field or in your hand in order to defeat it. This is actually a very powerful one. It's a shark, it costs 12, and it has all three requirements. After you meet the first two, the ninjas and of course the weapons, you're just going to need to have the potions, which are cards that you're going to get in the main deck. These are specific unique potion cards that will be uh, added and you can go ahead and pull these out of the deck, which you can then play from your hand after meeting the requirements for your ninjas and weapons. That will earn you unique new specific guards. They're a little bit more challenging. Additionally too, there's going to be new ninjas in the game and there's also going to be new weapons. These weapons and ninjas will have symbols on them, and if you combine the two, place a ninja and then a weapon, and they have the same symbol, you could actually gain a bonus gem from the guard you are trying to defeat. So in this case, if I had to fight this nine and I have these two ninjas that are both the same set type, I'll actually be able to gain an additional gem from the guard if I defeat them with at least these guys here. Another cool thing about the game is senseis now have a unique ability. If a sensei, which is a five, a very, very powerful ninja, is equipped with a weapon, and that sensei is discarded when defeating a guard, 
the weapon on the sensei will transfer to your basic ninja. You have to have it on the field and it's the one with the little lock symbol on the bottom right hand side and it's always the one value ninja. So you can place your strongest weapon on your sensei and he will then pass it down to his new trainee. And those are the main things that have been changed in the rules of the game. Now, additionally, there are new specific uh, variants of action cards and characters, uh, but they do different things. Like this one here is a resurrection spell, letting you trade this card in for any sloth, weapon, or potion in the discard pile. Or maybe it's going to be an elimination spell where you can defuse a demotion card. Demotion cards are from the main game, and they're used to play on weapons and or sloths to kind of stall them, maybe turning weapons value to zero or sloth to zero. And there are certain cards that are move those cards as well. Uh, Magic Moth will let you camouflage a squad and make it immune to all demotion cards, etc, etc. So there's a good chunk of new potions, of new characters, and of course additional spells that you'll be, you can utilize with the Sorcerer expansion. Now there's uh, two qualms I have with this game. And the first one is that the backs for the expansion have this kind of flair to them. So shuffling them in, you will know they're going to be drawing expansion cards as opposed to the base game cards. It's not really a big deal, but you can tell if somebody doesn't have potions if they do not have one of these, uh, at least one of these lightning cards in the back of their, in the, of their hand. Um, additionally too, the game has this kind of place one card out and use an action card, and then you're simply going to go to your end phase. What I would like to see with this game more so is instead of just having to do one of each, I wish I could either choose to place out two cards here or play two action cards, giving me a little bit more free will to place things out quicker to speed the game up. Um, otherwise though, the game plays really well. You're placing out your ninjas and weapons, trying to accumulate a number of value to then defeat the guard to gain the gems and have the most gems at the end of the game by the time all the gems run out. It's a very simple, family-friendly, take that style card game that has tableau management involved in it. I like the idea too of the expansion, adding the new master, allowing you to then give your weapon to another one of your specific ninjas on the field to kind of make sure you don't lose everything on your field. It always feels good to not lose everything. There's some feel bad moments in this game when you just have to remove everything and you're kind of starting from scratch every single time you take a guard. It's actually a lot easier to gain gems by just drawing cards and pulling out the steal an opponent's gem card or action. And then of course holding cards in your hand that will prevent players from stealing gems from you. That we have to worry about so much about these ninjas here, which I think takes away from the game. Now of course you will be placing them out and it kind of forces you to do at least one placement and at least one action card, but I kind of wish I could go either route. Thusly when I'm playing more ninjas and weapons, I feel like it's not so bad to be drawing cards to then take these guys from the guards here as opposed to just simply trying to hoard my action cards. At the end of the game when I played, when I had one, I had like four cards in my hand that said prevent a player from taking an action. There's actions in here that are kind of like a counter spell in Magic the Gathering that will prevent a player from being able to play something on you. It's called Ninja Hypnosis. It's one of the cards that is an action card that you can play off of your turn. There are no symbols for cards that are not played um, on your turn, like if I want to play a card that prevents a card from being played, that's obviously a card that I don't have to play on my turn. I can play it whenever I want. It would be cool if they had kind of a lightning symbol on the card or a punch symbol, something that lets me know that this is a card that is played off of my turn or a card that can be played off or on my turn. This is small nitpicks, but these are things that I think about when playing these type of games. The quality of the game is excellent. I love the boards. I love the fact they included the boards. I like the idea of adding the box to the guard. So it kind of gives us this elevated guard platform. I love, I love, ooh, I love the sloth artwork. It is cute. It is fun. All the sloths feel different. They remind me of Speedy from the uh, Zootopia. I believe his name is Speedy. I could be off though. But they're really, really fun, cute sloth artwork. You feel like you're ninjas and sloths fighting to defeat these certain guards. And all the guards are very, very menacing. And there's a ton of them with tons of wonderful artwork. It's beautiful, vibrant, high quality cards, high quality boards. Uh, the gems are pretty generic, but they work well and they have different colors. And then need to have different colors so that's a nice little addition to it. The box and the quality of this guy is excellent as well. Taking off the sleeve I would make sure that I always put it back on because sadly I don't think it even has the name of the game anywhere on the box so you definitely want to keep this sleeve and include it. It also is a way to hold the box together and the expansion brings a lot of improvements to the game. Keeping your weapons is excellent. Being able to kind of make combinations of ninjas with the different symbols in the bottom right so that you can gain more gems is great as well. And the guards having unique new 
additives or bonuses on the bottom right is a great addition to the game included. Uh, overall, it's a very fun game. It's a very family friendly game. All my Yes, qualms with the game are kind of not really all that important when you're playing with the younger kids. It's only things that adults are going to notice. And this is definitely a game that's more fitted for young kids to like teens and maybe just casual adult players. Anyway, overall, this is a really fun game. It's pretty straightforward. It has a lot of things that you've probably heard of or seen before, kind of with new elements attached to it. To take that with a tableau management added together with a very unique theme. And if you're looking for a game like this, I strongly recommend you take a look at it because we had a lot of fun with this one. Just wish it was a little quicker. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game or card game review for the game Ninja Sloths. If you're interested in picking up the game, there's a link down below in the description where you can pick up this game and the Sorcerer expansion. Additionally, if you would like, you can also go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so that you can see more of our videos that we create every week, three, four, five videos a week, just depends. And of course, a live stream on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to defeating you with my ninja slots and gaining all the gems next time.